Today we are working on a 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan and I'm going to show you how you can replace a common failure point in the cooling system. This Y right here goes to your heater hoses inside your vehicle and provides heat for the interior climate control. And this portion of this seam always cracks. So if you want to save a buck and do this at home, you can. So this Y right here is located behind what you guys are going to call your coil pack and underneath. It's held on with a standard clamp that you can remove with your needle nose pliers. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a set of hose clamps to clamp these hoses shut so that we minimize the fluid loss out of the cooling system. A couple of quick tips to take into consideration before starting this job. Make sure that you have needle nose pliers that are vice grips as well. This will immensely help you remove the six connections that you will need to that are hose clamped. You'll also want to be sure that you have rags, a drain pan, a catch pan, as well as any sort of heat resistant arm clothing or let the car cool down completely. The best thing that I can suggest doing this job is to make a diagram of your current routing for your hoses if you think you're going to forget. We'll be sure to post a link to a photo on our company website that has this diagram in case you get lost along your way. Please be sure to be careful, be mindful, and as always, have a good time. So the first thing that needs to happen when removing these is you need to remove your three hose clamps and you'll have plenty of access to get at them with needle nose pliers. So we'll go ahead and grab them and I'm going to actually pull them forward instead of backwards. So I'm going to cheat and use tools that will lock on. So these are my needle nose clampy boys. And once they are locked on, they won't unlock and I can easily manipulate the hose clamp off. And I'll do the same thing on the lower side. So you need to break these loose because they will eventually work their way into the rubber and almost seat themselves. So even though you've depressed the clamp and taken the tension off, they're still stuck on there. The next thing you need to do is you need to grab the hose and twist it left to right. So you have to grab the hose and twist it to break the seal because over time this rubber really forms and bonds with this metal. So the last method that I use if I'm having difficulty removing rubber hoses is a utility knife or just a really sharp blade. I'll go ahead and cut the rubber hose and then peel it off the surface that it's made it to. This is incredibly crucial when you're working with plastics because they're very brittle after all the heat cycles from owning and driving the car. So you'll want to use the cutaway method on anything that's plastic. So when I cut it, I just do a couple of passes on the same spot and eventually I make it through. Yeah, all right, there you go. All right, now we'll go do the same thing on the bottom. Okay. The last clip is on the back side of what you guys will call the coil pack. So on the back of the coil pack, I'm gonna grab this clamp and I'm gonna pull this one forward actually as far as I possibly can. I'm gonna leave this on there just in case this lip is catching on that clamp. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this hose off as well. So we have everything set up ready to install. Our hoses on the car are now broken loose and we have our hose clamp on these two hose ends to minimize the amount of coolant that we're gonna lose. We also have a catch pan underneath the car to capture any additional coolant that is lost. So now we're gonna go ahead and do this quickly to minimize that loss of coolant. So I'm gonna have this ready and let's twist this guy. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, all right, we don't have anything to worry about, so. Just gonna go ahead and remove everything. So the coolant level on this car is actually really low, so we don't really have any mess to clean up or anything to worry about. So we're gonna move ahead and just do the repair at a timely fashion. All right, now if your vehicle is not equipped with an auxiliary cooler, you're not gonna have this entire assembly. You'll just have one of these. But since this vehicle has both front and rear passenger cooling zones, 
we not only have this hose which we've just removed, we also have this other one down here. So we're going to go ahead and replace that one as well. This will be the second most common failure point of your cooling system. So this is also inside the engine compartment at the same location as where we were just working and we're going to go ahead and show you how to remove that too. It uses what's called a quick disconnect and how that works is once this is in place, these little clamps here snap on to a flared end of pipe and to remove those you just have to depress them and pull them out. Alright so to remove this what you do is you actually press down on both sides of these tabs while lifting and it comes right off. So you just press these two tabs in and you can pull this out. So once we have this out, we'll go ahead and just replace the connections for this assembly. So now we're gonna go ahead and reassemble this. What we do is we just clip this right back on and this hose is gonna to go to your lower section and this top hose is gonna go into your upper heater core which goes into the driver side of the firewall. So right now there's a bunch of hoses everywhere and it's hard to see in the video, but when you're doing this yourself at home, it'll be very apparent where they go. Just be sure to remove one hose, put the next hose on, and so on so you don't get any hoses crossed. If you do that, you're going to have reduced performance in your heating system inside the car. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our white clip. And with our white clip removed, we'll go ahead and slide on our new hose assembly. Yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and install the hoses how they came off. If you don't want to do this with all the hoses in their direction, make a small hose diagram before removing it. That way you won't need to leave everything in place. I have no problem with working around the mess, and I like to make sure that I take one off and put one on so I know I don't mess it up. But if you're doing this at home, be sure to make a diagram. It'll make it a lot easier for you. So this top hose goes to the vertical section hose that has that quick disconnect that you pull apart. This lower hose goes into the top end of the Y that was originally leaking that is located behind and underneath the ignition coil pack. So this hose is located behind the ignition coil pack and this hose is located on the vertical section with the quick disconnect. This top hose here goes to the section of heater hoses that has the quick disconnect on it. This bottom hose that's directly below it there we go. This bottom hose directly below it goes to the heater section hose that's mated just underneath the coil block. So now that we have all of our heater hoses on, we're going to go ahead and reattach all of our clamps and position everything as far away from heat as possible. I'm referring to the exhaust and to the engine. Now this new hose kit does have a small little piece of plastic that protects the hoses. It's nowhere near as good as the nice metal OEM shrouding that it used to come with. Once you have all your hoses back on, top off your coolant level, start the vehicle and let it get up to operating temperature. You want to turn on your heat and confirm that dual zones have proper and adequate heat. After that, double check, make sure all your connections are solid, that there's no leaks, and at that point, you finish. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, happy motoring.